Now, our recent film, which I was thrilled to share with you, Fabian of the Yard, Fabian of Scotland Yard, of course, brilliantly acted by Bruce Seton, really did hit a chord with many of you. I'm so glad that you enjoyed it because it was a wonderful sort of look at a TV series that now seemingly we would never make, would we? It was very well sort of constructed, a brilliant storyline, and of course, quite fast action pace considering the budget that they made them under and more importantly the decade that it was in. I wanted to introduce you to another favourite of mine which I just think is equally as compelling as Fabian of the Yard. Now as you know Fabian was rather famous himself. This particular detective Mark Sabre, well, a little bit different in fact, because he was, shall we say, a detective with a bit of a mission and put together by an award-winning American duo from New York City, no less, who knew how to make television fast, quickly, and more importantly, cheaply, but making it look as an expensive B-movie or perhaps even an A-feature film at the cinema. Let me explain. In 1955, the Danziger brothers changed the format of the show called Devise from an anthology series to a standard format mystery series, completely dedicated to the Mark Saber stories. They rebooted the Mark Saber drama and television series that was running on ABC in the US. Now, Harry and Edward Danziger, producers extraordinaire, were both native New Yorkers. They set up shop in Britain in 1952 and for a decade truly ruled the world's most prolific independent supplier of television shows and B-movies, creating nearly 100 films and in excess of 300 TV episodes for the British and American market. Their longest running creation was the one-armed detective, Mark Saber, who sleuthed his way through more than 150 episodes of murder, blackmail and conduct on Becoming. Co-star Donald Gray alongside Colin Tapley has his reliable inspector and once more featuring scripts from Brian Clements, later of course of the Avengers fame, Sabre of London ran for an unprecedented 91 episodes. As I say, the reason why I quite like this particular series is it really just sort of captures the moment of a moment, you know, a moment of time, should I say. You look around and you think, wow, was life really like that? Were people so respectful? Did they all speak so concisely? Was there no slang, nothing on the streets like litter? You know the sort of things I'm talking about. Even crime busters seemingly had more respect for each other in those long gone decades now. So as ever, I'd like you to sit back, relax and enjoy Sabre of London. Let me know how you think about this one regarding the, say, difference between Fabian of the Yard and this one. I think, just to give you a bit of inside track, even though the, they were filmed in the same period in the same decade, it seemed to me to have a little bit more modernistic twist, but this could be down to the fast-paced production values that the Danziger brothers put together, and more importantly, it was one take. You very rarely got a chance to do another take, you know what I'm saying? That's how cheap these things were made. But they have stood the test of time. A brilliant story awaits, and as ever, as the curtain go down, you grab your cup of tea or your coffee or a Horlicks, sit back, relax and enjoy this week's free matinee. Neil Sean, Scotland Yard, London. Never. The penny black with a unique printer's error. Any collector worthy of the name would give an eye to own this stamp. And now it's mine. You hear? It's mine. But, Mr. Ferrari, the stamp was sold to you by mistake. My wife had no idea of its real worth. She named the price and I paid it in cash. Why don't you get a lawyer? Get a dozen. They'll all tell you the same thing. That stamp belongs to me. But I refund the money in full, sir. Plus 10%, or even 20. You're wasting your time. 
Mr. Ferrari, we've been doing business together for a great many years. And I know you, you old rascal. You bought that stamp in Tangier for a song, I'll bet. And now you want it back to sell it to someone like Turner, who would no doubt offer you so much that you'd be able to retire. But Turner already knows I have it. He's green with envy. Mr. Ferrari, name a reasonable price. Nothing doing. I'm sorry, sir. These papers for signing. Uh, later, Sims. If you don't return that stamp, I'll... I'll kill you! Inspector Parker, Scotland Yard. You made the call? Yes, sir. Where is he? This way, sir. Straight into his heart. Oh, it's a terrible business, sir. Terrible. Has anything been touched? No, sir, nothing. Hit the fingerprint boys down here right away. I'm the pathologist. See that nobody comes in. You're the butler, I take it? Yes, sir. I've been with Mr. Ferrari for over seven years now. Was anyone else in the house at the time? No, sir, nobody. The cook's in holiday just now. Mr. Ferrari was married? Mrs. Ferrari died some years ago. That's Master Bobby, sir. Mr. Ferrari's son. He's away at school in Switzerland. I wondered who was going to tell him. They're on their way over, sir. Roberts is not at his shop. I don't wonder. Put out a general alert. That's been done, sir. He won't get far. Good. Well, now, Sim, suppose you tell me exactly what happened. Well, I came into the hall, sir, with some papers I wanted Mr. Ferrari to sign. When I heard raised voices, I paused behind the door. The quarrel seemed to be about a stamp. A stamp? Yes, yes, a very valuable one, sir. Apparently, my employer had bought it from Mr. Roberts. Well, Mr. Roberts wanted it back, and Mr. Ferrari refused. Well, then I came in with the papers, but Mr. Ferrari told me to come back later. Well, just as I was leaving, Mr. Roberts, he seemed very excited, sir. Threatened to kill him. Then what did you do? Well, I, I'm afraid I went back to my room, sir, you see. I, I couldn't believe that Mr. Roberts was serious, that they could come to murder. And, well, I, I thought that Mr. Ferrari was well able to look after himself. Well, a, a few seconds later, I heard Mr. Ferrari cry out for me. I rushed in here and... and there was Mr. Roberts, staring down at the body. Did Roberts say anything? No, sir. No, he didn't. Actually, I was very upset, and I started to grapple with him in here and out in the hall, but I couldn't hold him. I remember shouting that he'd killed Mr. Ferrari. Well, then he struck out at me, knocked me down, and rushed out. I was going to follow him, sir, but then I decided it would be better to stay here with Mr. Ferrari, so I, so I came in and, and phoned up the police immediately. And these French windows, were they closed at the time? Yes, they were, sir. The knife that killed Mr. Farley, had you seen it before? Yes, I had, sir. It's a hunting knife, sir. Mr. Ferrari treasured it. His wife gave it to him a few years ago when he did some hunting. It always lay in the desk here, sir. Mr. Ferrari used it for opening letters. Mr. Roberts must have grabbed it and... What exactly was this stamp that they were quarrelling about? Oh, it was called a, a penny black, sir. With a printer's error, I believe it made it very valuable. Mr. Ferrari showed it to me only yesterday. Very proud of it he was, sir. He kept it in this book? Yes, sir, he did. And he kept the book in that safe over there. Well, there's no sign of any penny black here. Roberts properly took it with him. Let's hope they pick him up soon. Two days after the murder of wealthy John Ferrari, police are still unable to trace the whereabouts of stamp dealer James Roberts, whom they believe will be able to assist them in their inquiries. Yeah, I've read about the case, Pete. If I'm in Roberts' shoes, I'd disappear too. Now, suppose you carry on with those reports on the case with which we do happen to be involved. At the door. Mark Saber. That's right. Looks like we're involved, Mark. Roberts? I didn't do it, Mr. Saber. I didn't kill Ferrari. That's why I've come to see you. Why me? I've been told a lot about you, Mr. Saber. I've been told you're the best private investigator there is. Well, the only investigation that seems necessary in this case is to find you. I'm innocent of murder, Mr. Saber, and I want you to prove it. It's all in. I can't believe this is really happening to me. It's, it's like a nightmare. Why did I say I'd kill him? Why? Won't believe now that I didn't. 
Now, Mr. Roberts, drink this. Why did you run away? Didn't you realize that would convince everyone? That I was guilty? Well, yes, I realize that now, but I didn't stop to think. I just ran. Where have you been hiding? With a friend. What about your wife? I haven't tried to contact her. That's the worst part of it. She probably thinks she's married to a murderer now. Well, if you didn't kill Ferrari, who did? I don't know. All right. Let's see what did happen. Well, we, we had a disagreement about the penny black. I implored him to sell it back to me at a substantial profit. He just laughed at me. That made me mad. I, I threatened to kill him. He stood up, I remember, anxious for me to go. Then he suddenly let out a cry and he clutched at the air with his hand and then pitched forward onto the carpet. I saw the knife in his back. I just stood there, horrified, staring down at him. Where was he standing at the time? With his back to the open French windows. You think whoever killed Ferrari was out in the garden and threw the knife into the room? What other explanation is there? Did you look in the garden? No, I, I was too stunned to move. Well, then the butler came in and accused me of murder. Well, I panicked and we struggled, first in the sitting room, then in the hall. The next thing I knew, I was running through the streets. With the penny black in your pocket? No, sir. You'd swear to that? So help me God. The stamp was on the desk when Ferrari was killed. It was. Then as you fought with the butler in the hall, the murderer must have come into the sitting room through the French window and stolen it. Gone back the same way and closed the window. Well, what else could have happened? Mr. Saber, I've not much money. But it's all yours if you'll clear me of this mess. Oh, don't worry about that. All right, Roberts, I'll handle your case. On one condition. What's that? You give yourself up to the police. I'll try to get them to keep your whereabouts unknown for a few days. But they must be told. You tell them, and I'll rarely believe you're on the level. You can use this phone. Get me Scotland Yard, please. Oh, can I speak to Inspector Parker, please? My name's James Roberts. I took Roberts to Scotland Yard, then called on his wife at the stamp shop. Mrs. Roberts? Yes? I'm Mark Saber. Oh, Mr. Saber, I'm so glad to see you. Is there anything at all I could do to help? Yes, perhaps there is. Can you tell me how you came to sell the penny black to Ferrari? Yes. It was about a week ago. I showed him the penny black. I wish now I'd burnt it instead, but... Well, anyway, he offered me what seemed to be a very fair price. I had no idea of its true value. Accepted, and he paid cash. Where was your husband? Oh, he was still in Tangier. He'd sent the stamp on ahead with others by registered post. Well, when he arrived home, I told him about the sale, and he went dashing off to see Ferrari. I haven't seen him since. Mrs. Roberts, think carefully. Did anyone else know the Penny Black was in England? Well, no, how could they? Mr. Ferrari was the only customer I showed it to. Uh, did Ferrari say anything at the time? Uh, try to remember, Mrs. Roberts. Well, he... he seemed very excited. Yes. He said, just wait until Turner hears about this. Turner? Yes, another collector, um, a friend, a rival of Mr. Ferrari's. Rival? Oh, Mr. Turner's a very good customer here. Surely you don't if think... If he's a customer, uh, perhaps you have his address. Sure you won't have one? No, thanks. Don't drink on duty, huh? Didn't know it applied to the irregulars. Always thought you private eyes took your daily shower in rye. <laughs> hmm. Well, where were we? Talking about Ferrari. Hmm, quite a shock when I heard he'd been murdered. We're rivals, but I hate to lose him. And Roberts, too, the best dealer in the business. Both gone in one week. It's not funny, I can tell you. Roberts isn't lost yet, Mr. Turner. Well, you know how it is, old man. One reads the papers. You knew that Ferrari had a very special penny black. Yes, yes, he did mention it. I was supposed to go green with envy. <laughs> Confidentially, I'd have done anything, old boy, to get hold of that particular stamp, short of murder. You're quite a collector, aren't you, Tanner? 
Stamps are a passion with me. And big game hunting. Ever bring anything down with this? Now look here, Saber. Just what are you getting at? If that was meant to be funny... It wasn't. I was merely pointing out that facts can look peculiar, not only for Roberts. You knew that Ferrari had that penny black. You wanted it. And he was killed with something very like this by someone who knew how to handle it. Sounds plausible. But you're making one mistake. When I go after something big, game or stamps, I bring it home. And I don't have that penny black. Yes, speaking. Who are you? Well, it doesn't matter who I am, but it does matter what I've got. A very special penny black. There isn't another one like it. I can't talk now. Yeah. All right, I'll say that tomorrow. Sorry for the interruption, Sabre, and I'm sorry I can't be of more help. Ferrari and I may have been rivals when it came to rare stamps, but I'd like to remind you of one small point you seem to have overlooked. He was a friend of mine. Well, I'll be going now, Turner. I'll let myself out. Oh, uh, if you should come up with anything... I'll be in touch with him. After all, Roberts is my friend, too. I told Pete about the telephone conversation Turner had with someone he was going to meet tomorrow. I wanted to know who the person was, so I detailed Pete to follow Turner and find out. Mark Saver. Listen, I followed Turner to a little cafe. He met up with a bright little blonde. I managed to get a table near them. Did you hear anything? A anything that adds up? Yeah. She's selling and he's buying for big money. They didn't mention it by name, but I'm sure it's the Penny Black. Okay. You stay there until they leave the cafe. If they split up, follow the girl. Hang on, Mark. They're, they're coming out now. Look, I've got to go, but I'll call you back as soon as I can. Ah, uh, yes? Okay, let me have that address. Yeah. Good work. All right, stay put and wait for me.
found one? Uh, yes, we're looking for a girl. Blonde, medium height, blue coat. What's her name? Don't know. But we have a message for her. It's very urgent. Well, I don't know. I'm a private investigator. Do you want the police around here? Oh, it's like that, is it? Yes, it's like that. Name's Rosie Stack. Upstairs, second door on the right, round the corner. Thank you. Come in. You're early? Bad habit of mine. I'm always early. What do you want, busting in air? I've seen you someplace before. Yes, Antonio's. Half an hour ago. I remember. Now, what is this? Get out of here, both of you. This is my assistant. I'm Mark Saber, private investigator. Now, Miss Tack, where's the stamp? What are you talking about? The penny black that you sold to Turner half an hour ago. You're crazy. I haven't got any stamp. Now, get out of here, both of you. I'll call the cops. What's the stamp? Give me that. From Switzerland. Addressed to you. Dear Rosie, hope to see you at Christmas. Keep the stamp for my collection. Signed, Bobby Ferrari. Relation of Ferrari? John Ferrari's son? Hmm. You seem to be pretty close to the family, Miss Stack. No. A nursery-maid, perhaps, till the boy went to school. No doubt you're familiar with the house. Familiar with your employer's stamp collection. Stamp? I haven't got any stamp. <laughs> well, go ahead. Search the room, if you like. I would like. Go ahead, Pete. Miss Stack, Ferrari was killed because of that stamp. But the police have that dealer, that man Robert, he gave himself up. You know he didn't do it, Miss Stack. The police believe, and so do I, that whoever killed Ferrari still has the stamp. And you're offering the stamp for sale. Well, I didn't kill him, I didn't. Look here, Mark. Two air tickets for Amsterdam and two passports. One in the name of Rosie Stack and the other... All right, I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything you want to know. Everyone here? Yes, they're all in the city room, sir. Now, look, this is ridiculous. I have an engagement. That is not as important as this, sir. All of you, one way or another, is involved in the murder of John Ferrari. If you are suggesting that... I'm not suggesting anything yet, but I think Mr. Sabre will enlighten you all. All right. Now, Mr. Turner, we, we all know that you are dead set on the stamp. Uh, Mrs. Roberts, you sold the penny black in error. Yes, yes, I did. And Mr. Roberts came here with the intention of getting it back. I did. Sims. Ah, you must be Sims. Sir. You heard uh, Mr. Roberts quarrel with your employer and threaten to kill him. Yes, sir. All right. Now, I'll suggest to you all what actually took place here when Ferrari met his death. The victim was sitting in this chair. Mr. Roberts was standing opposite him. Would you mind, Mr. Roberts? Turner already knows I have it. He's green with envy. You don't think I'd let him score over me, hmm? Mr. Ferrari, name a reasonable price. Nothing doing. I'm sorry, sir. These papers for signing. But later, Sims. If you don't return that stamp, I'll... I'll kill you. How dare you speak to me like this? How dare you? Your wife made a mistake. That's your bad luck, not mine. Now get out. Get out of here. Since Mr. Ferrari, I'm asking you, begging you. Sir. Mr. Ferrari, what is it? Mr. Ferrari. You called, sir? You killed him. I heard you threatening him. You're a murderer. No. You're going to hang for this.
Scotland Yard, please. You called the police. You had just a few minutes to hide the penny black. You overheard Roberts threatening to kill. Evidently, the knife usually kept in your employer's desk was in the kitchen. With that knife, you hurried out into the garden. The French windows were open. Your aim was good. That knife went straight through the heart. Oh, this is fantastic. Surely you don't believe a word of this, Inspector. You wore gloves. There were no fingerprints on the knife. But why would I kill Mr. Ferrari? And you're also accusing me of taking the penny black stamp. Yes, we are. Well, what would I want to? Then? What am I supposed to have done with it? We know exactly what you did with it. You gave it to your girlfriend to sell to Turner. You were flying to Amsterdam the next day. Oh, who told you this wild story? Bring her in. You fool! I had to, Paul. They found out about us. I'm sorry, Paul. I couldn't help it. Sorry. You're stupid. I should have known better than to tell you about it. Oh, all this for one little postage stamp. That will be even more valuable now. Well, I'd still like to own it. Well, we don't want to have anything more to do with it. All right, Mrs. Roberts, you can take your husband home now. Thank you, Mr. Saban. Well, Turner, I'll have that drink from you now. Why, of course. from London.